Hey guys, in this video I want to talk a little bit about my favorite bodybuilding show of all time, the 1999 British Grand Prix. I've done a complete analysis on the top three of this comparison, so if you guys are interested in that video, I'll put it down below. However, in this video, I'll be taking a look at some of the key reasons as to why this show was just so, you know, awesome. Uh, not only was the lineup completely stacked, featuring big names like Ronnie, Kevin, and Flex, who obviously made up the top three, but also some of the best lighting and stage presence and just things of that nature in general. Now, before the video does start, if you guys are enjoying my content, a like and sub would be much appreciated. And with that all being said, let's get into this video. All right, I know I made a rather bold claim stating that the 1999 British Grand Prix is the best show of all time. However, give me a second to explain. Firstly, let's take a look at the competitors at this show. Making up the top 10, you had Ronnie Coleman, Flex Wheeler, Kevin Lavroni, Dexter Jackson, Milo Sarsev, Nasser Alsambati, Marcus Rule, Elvis Brown, Colin Wright, and Jamo Nazar. I'm sure many of you recognize the big names in the top 10, many of which would go on to become some of the most legendary figures in bodybuilding. What is even more important impressive is that virtually every single top guy was spot on. You had the top three looking absolutely spectacular, and guys like Dexter, Marcus, and Nasser, and Milos presented top tier conditioning and really good size too. Dexter in particular was very impressive, and I've always preferred his earlier showings due to his extremely small waistline and great lines. In all honesty, the only you know disappointing competitor would have to be Nasser, since I've definitely seen him better. Not you know not that he was bad by any means, but you you know, if, if anything, he was great. However, in 1997 at the Olympia, he definitely looked a lot better in my opinion. Now, all of this immaculate presentation was most certainly helped by the crazy lighting. Just taking a look at the top three from the show shows you that the lighting here was perfect. Look at the way the lights cast shadows and create crevices throughout each of their physiques, and compare that to today's shows where you can barely see any of the details, you know, due to those blinding backgrounds and washed out lighting. I don't understand why big shows like the Olympia or the Arnold can't just use a completely matte black background for the prejudging at least, as they have the budget to set up the best possible stages that highlight their competitors' hard work. I get it that large screens and flashy backgrounds are showy and look really cool alone, however look at how easy it is to notice condition, muscularity, and detail on these guys. In my opinion, the overall setup of this show has got to be one of the best ever, and you really couldn't have asked for anything else. Okay, now that I've spoken a bit about why this show was so good, let's take a look at the top three posing routines. First, we've got Flex Wheeler, who brought one of his best looks of all time in my opinion, even stating it himself that this was his best look. He was full as a house, super round and bubbly, conditioned and incredibly aesthetic. Some of his weaknesses, namely his calves, glute conditioning, and back, were not nearly as noticeable as they were at, you know, other shows like the 1999 Olympia, and he really did look flawless. Sure, you can notice that his hamstrings and glutes were not as conditioned as they were in, you know, let's say 1993, for example, the Arnold Classic or the Olympia. However, his fullness, size, and shape were absolutely perfect. Not to mention that his posing here was just phenomenal. This has got to be one of the best posing routines for Flex Wheeler because, you know, it seemed like everything came together, the lighting, the stage background, everything was just spot on, his peak was just right, and his presentation was amazing. Here's the king, Ronnie Coleman, and I think he really needs no introduction. Both his 1998 and 1999 Mr. Olympia versions were outstanding. However, I really do think that this version right here might just be his best, mainly due to the lighting. At this show, his waistline was still relatively small. However, he looked huge everywhere else. Arms, legs, delts, and chest were so full and ripped, and his back was absolutely demolishing the competition. A fun little note about this posing routine is that you'll see him hit the side tricep, and in my opinion, this is the best side tricep that he has ever hit of all time. One could even call it aesthetic. Another thing to notice is that he had a relatively good midsection in terms of the control and things like that. So, you know, it's just really impressive. That's something he definitely lost control of later on. Namely, I'd say after... 2001, 2002, his midsection started to go in all sorts of different directions. So, you know, all in all, this posing routine does showcase a really impressive display of artistic expression from Ronnie as well, something he wasn't really known for, as well as the obvious, you know, an absolutely dominant physique. All right, guys, lastly, here's Kevin Lavroni, who brought a really, really impressive look. In my opinion, he struck a perfect balance between conditioning and size, as later on in his career, he would come in fuller but less defined, or more conditioned but with smaller legs. 
Here, though, he has some really huge tree trunks, separated quads, ripped hamstrings, and striated glutes. Additionally, this posing routine showcases his delts in some of the craziest lighting of all time, and they look like cannonballs. Similarly to Flex, the lighting here sort of hid all of the flaws that you would normally see on his physique, namely his weaker back and conditioning. If anything, though, it seems as if he brought a really solid competitive back and top-tier conditioning as well, especially from behind. This is personally one of my favorite versions of Kevin, as like I said, he had that balance and polish to his physique, and he looked absolutely monstrous and freaky here too. Now, I dive more into this into my dedicated top three video. However, I do 100% agree with the outcome of this show. Watching the video footage and looking at pictures of the show only confirms that Ronnie was definitely miles ahead of Flex and Kevin for entirely different reasons. For Flex, Ronnie had a far superior set of hamstrings and glutes, conditioning-wise, and outclassed him in terms of overall separation and hardness. For Kevin, Ronnie demolished him in the back and also outclassed him in the front in certain poses like the front double and front lat spread. In terms of who was better between Kevin and Flex, I'd say that it was close, but Flex's unique aesthetics and round, bubbly muscle quality definitely outdid Kevin. I know many of you will say that Flex was full of oil and all of that, however, even if he was, he sure did present it in a pretty discreet and aesthetic way. Like I said though, if you want a complete breakdown of each pose, check out my video, uh, it's going to be linked down below. Okay, now let's get into why I think this is the best show of all time. I already talked about the stage presentation and the extremely deep lineup. However, there's still, you know, one more thing that really makes this show stand out to me, and that is the sheer simplicity of it. You may have noticed that there really isn't anything fancy going on with anyone or anything, no shining strobe lights, no one lined up in the background, and really just no nonsense. It seemed as if everyone just got to the point of why they were there, whether it be striking the pose, doing an amazing posing routine, or just presenting themselves in a, you know, legendary manner. I don't know, this is a rather nitpicky and small thing, but I do really appreciate this era of bodybuilding because it seemed as if the sole focus was on the competitors and that everything was designed for them. No fancy equipment or showy sets, just a raw competitive performance. That being said, the sheer genetic depth of this show was mind-blowing as well, and a part of me does acknowledge that seeing these legends at their all-time best does make the show that much better. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this more historical or talking style of video, and let me know down below what you guys think about this show. Also, let me know what your favorite show of all time was, and if you'd like to see me do a similar talking and rambling video on some other topic or show. With that all being said, I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.